It's great to be here at the World Creator Summit. We're towards the end of the event, uh, but I'm here with Jean-Michel Jarre, uh, who is a new president of uh, CSAC. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, Jean-Michel Jarre uh, needs no introduction, an artist that has uh, uh, sold over 80 million records worldwide and a career spanning uh, for over four decades. So it's a, a pleasure to have you on, and thanks, uh, thanks for making the time. How's it going? Uh, it's going very well so far. Uh, I'm... Uh I'm still a candidate tonight, and uh, yeah. I think that um, I may become president of CISAC tomorrow morning. Yeah. So far, so good. Uh, so, uh, you know, what is your uh, experience with CISAC so far, and, and how have you come in, in contact with the organization? I think uh, CISAC is a unique opportunity for, for a lot of creators, if not all creators around the world. I think it's a sleeping beauty. Uh, nobody knows CISAC in the street or in the in the public. Uh, it's uh, and and what is great with CISAC is actually uh, it's englobing all creators from different sectors and from all over the world. And I think that the, all the problems we are facing with new technology, with the new actors of the internet, is <clears throat> the fact that. At the moment, the answer we, we try to have is an answer territory per territory and sector per sector of creation. And, and that it doesn't work because there is a, a problem of scale. Yeah. And I think that uh, uh, the uh, intellectual property is far uh, wider and can't be reduced to just a problem of getting royalties back and getting author's rights back. Yeah. It's wider than that. This is part of the problem, a major part, but it's not only this problem, this issue. I think that uh, uh, intellectual property uh, is um, uh, a global problem for all sectors, including uh, obviously music and, and architecture and graphic arts and, and, uh, and uh, um, film industry and uh, uh, film directors. Uh, and uh, uh, journalism, yeah, sure. painters, and so on and so forth. And, and also, geographically, it's not only an issue between Europe and uh, America. It's actually also, if you think of it, that, uh, for instance, um, in Africa, in uh, uh, Aborigine, uh, in the Aborigines, the Maoris, uh, Fiji Islands, they are, all these um, continents and countries, they have some patterns, some graphics, some uh, music that are constantly stolen by the advertising world, yeah. by the fashion world. And even these guys in, the, in our countries don't even realize that they are stealing something. But this is intellectual property. It means that uh, it requires respect, but it requires also contribution. Yeah. And especially to countries and, and people who are even having more problems than in our world, in this part of the world. So I think we see that it's a, it's a global problem. Yeah. And uh, uh, we can, uh, and you know, I see, I see the problem of intellectual property like ecology and environment. When my, one of my first albums was called Oxygen, and it was almost, I mean, around 30 years ago, it was not that, uh, uh, we're not that many to think about environment and ecology. We were considered as that, at that time as dreamers. And then step by step, now, uh, everybody is conscious about the importance of environment and, and, uh, and ecology. Then every political party has to integrate ecology and environment in their program. Yeah. So intellectual property is exactly, it's exactly the same for tomorrow. Yeah. We have to go to convey a clear message on our side as creators to the public opinion, to the media, to make clear and, 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 and uh, to make them understand that this is one major element of, our, of the identity of a community. Yeah. I mean, and even beyond this, I would say that in conflicts such as uh, in Mali, for instance, what's going on at the moment, uh, where uh, in people, I mean, really suffering in their flesh, I mean, the best soothing element of these cars is music, yeah. is graphic arts, is express, expressing themselves, because it's a way to keep their identity intact or preserve their identity. So we, we, we see that by, we can't touch that. We have to, 
I mean, it's a diamond, intellectual, I mean, creation, and everybody can understand that. Yeah. So then, obviously, it has to be linked to a sustainable economy. So we have to invent, to create new ways, new means of retribution for creators. Yeah. I mean, I'm a very privileged artist, I mean, uh, and, and have, uh, I can live with my, with my work. It's not the case with the majority of artists uh, all, around, all, all over the world. I mean, we know that kids all over the world now can't start doing music or doing uh, graphic arts. They would dream to, do, to, to be artists, but they, they need to have a job on the side. It's, and it's going to be worse and worse if we are not finding a way to, uh, uh, to invent a new system. Yeah. And this new system is, uh, I think, it is probably the, the reason why that BRICS, all the, the new emerging countries, such as India and China and Brazil, we have a lot to learn from them because they are starting from scratch in terms of intellectual property, <laughs> more or less. And then, then because of that, they are, they are automatically they will create something in phase from, from a virgin platform uh, with our days. And it's the, the reason why that I think we should, uh, we should join forces for that. You know, we have to make clear that a smartphone is much less far, uh, much less smart without music, yeah. without uh, literature, without, without news, without uh, video games, and without uh, video and music. Yeah, sure. And uh, you're a, a pioneer of uh, electronic music, and uh, uh, of course, use technology uh, from the from the very you know from from, from the very early stages as a, as a tool. And uh, a lot of the conversation that I heard today um, uh, from from the from the creators is that. Uh, uh, Technology has to be seen as a tool, and it can be a positive one. Uh, but uh, you know, there is still a little bit of friction between the technology industry and, and the creative industries, at least as far as I've seen in the last couple of days. So, how, how do you think that can be uh, uh, smoothed out? Actually, I always, in my in my own career, I always had to fight against the system using new technology. Yeah. When I started as a music as an, uh, musician as in electronic music, we were just a bunch of considered as a bunch of crazy guys doing crazy sounds on cra on, on odd and weird instruments. Mm -hmm. And actually, my first album, like uh, Oxygen, has been re refused and rejected by almost by all record companies at that time. So, I think I have a kind of experience of fighting and dealing with new technology, yeah. and uh, I can say that. Generation after generation, we always have to, to uh, uh, we, are, we always have two uh, two attitude. One is to be scared. It always happened when television happened. The world of cinema said, "Okay, this is the end of it," and it was the reverse. When uh, uh, the when the uh, recording industry started, all the publishers and the publishing world said. This is the end of it. We were we had the monopole of rights, and now it's the the guy. They are the guys. I mean, manufacturing vinyls and records and so on and so forth, who are going to to steal from us. And then it didn't really happen because, I mean, they had to adapt themselves to the new system. I think it's the same thing with internet. We have to find a way uh, to uh, uh, to deal with the new. Rule and with the new uh, with the new um, instruments. Actually, you have to. I think the, the, the I think it's not very positive to try to uh, oppose and to, to create an opposition between uh, artists could be a kind of victims and complaining. It's not what we are anyway. Uh, uh, the world is not waiting of having. It's not the image of artists. Sure. Yeah. And 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 so we have to. Okay, to, to uh, uh, backstage to discuss exactly what what we want, and then conveying one clear and message, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, clear and precise message. And on the other hand, I mean, if you think about Google and YouTube, it has been created by young kids 15 years ago. Yeah. All these giants of the internet even didn't existing didn't, didn't existed 15 years ago, and those kids suddenly who created that. I mean, they. They created fa a fantastic tool, but they had no idea that 15 years later they could be considered as devils. They may become devils, but, it's a, but they still have a chance, maybe. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and, 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 and this opportunity for us is to, to find a way. They need us, and, you need, and we need them. So, the, so, but it's a matter of vocabulary, grammar, 
and communication and education. And also, we must, we must also uh, promote what we are talking about to the public opinion. Yeah. People in the street don't understand what we are talking about. It's our responsibility to make our message clear. And at the moment, I mean, people don't don't even know what uh, CISAC is, what yeah, uh, sure. PRS, what uh, ASC, ASCAP, all these acronyms are very abstract. So there is a big confusion. And obviously, uh, and also, it's absolutely unfair and, and, and untrue to consider that manufacturer, manufacturer of electronic products would symbolize the future and artists and creators would symbolize a kind of old-fashioned world uh, with uh, rich kids sat on their pot of gold, pots of gold. I think this has to be restored. We have been the outsiders as artists and creators, questioning and shaking the trees and, and questioning societies. We, we must, we must uh, restore this image and having an image more exciting, more glamorous that we always, artists always had and, and, and finding, finding the, 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 the appropriate uh, uh, economy, uh, economical eco ecosystem, economic system. Yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. And I think it's going to be a very interesting mission and, uh, and I think the bringing CISAC also to a, a, a bigger stage and, and making people more aware of, of what it does, I think it's going to play a big part in into making people understand that there is an overarching organization that can look after the interests of creators in countries also that may not have the same support structure as the US or the UK or France. Yes, I think CISAC has, uh, has to become a kind of United Nations of creators. Yeah. UN of creators and it's it's exactly w what it should be and also we should go for it we should also uh, have a, a, a dynamic attitude I'm absolutely convinced that we can we it's by joining forces joining forces geographically I mean the reason why that I fr from day one I really wished to have also VPs from uh, and actually we have great artists as vice presidents such as uh, uh, Usman So the, from Senegal, great sculpture and, and Angelique Kidjo from Benin from Africa also uh, and and some some uh, brilliant writers from India, filmmakers from Argentina, from uh, from all over the world and I think also ambassadors in all territories because what we need now is also having a, a strategy of lobbying in each territory. Yeah, sure. As president as president of CISAC, I can't I cannot be efficient everywhere. Sure. We need to to set up a kind of commando where we can suddenly if we have an action or something to, to say to Washington, to Brussels or to the media or whatever, push a button and then we have ten thousand, twenty thousand artists relevant significant established artists or beginners able to sign a petition to to uh, to go for it and and speaking with the same voice yeah. and that will change a lot well, thanks so much for your time and uh, good luck in your new position as well thank you very much